when did you meet Kim? You met Kim. I mean, I'm sure you met her many times, but like, because I mean, I've heard, you know, from, yes, I've heard nothing but great things about all of the Kardashians. They work, they get up and they go to work, like no pun intended for Kim's like viral video. But even so, like I heard that like Kim, if you get her on a carpet, you have three minutes, she gives you what you need within like 45 seconds. Like she gets it. She understands how to talk in sound bites, what you need. I'm going to make your job easy because you're me making your job easy. I'm going to be able to move on for the night. Everyone's going to get what they want and we're all just going to move on in the day. I don't think people give her as much credit as she deserves for and I, I can just see your listeners cringing right now, but it's it's a hundred percent true. She she knows how to work this industry better than anyone else, and that's the the pure fact of it. To stay relevant for as long as they have is near damn impossible, but they have. And to keep a reality show on TV this long is crazy as well. But I think Kim has this knowledge. And I, I don't know, it just comes naturally to her. But like you said, she knows what to give the sound by. She knows what to tease out. They have something, some big news story happen in their family. They leak out a certain piece of it. The media picks it up. It goes crazy. But then when the reality show comes out and you see their reaction, it it like refuels that fire. That That's a hard recipe to come up with. And they've, they've done it. And a, a lot of it's Kim. You know, everyone I like I know likes to give Chris a lot of the credit, but it's Kim was the mastermind behind it all. Chris came in and backed her up when Kim, you know, couldn't manage the whole family at a certain point. But, you know, we actually have a really fascinating interview coming out uh, this week, and it's with um, the former owner uh, or the former CEO of Splash News. Do you remember Splash News? Yeah. It was a paparazzi agency. It was the biggest paparazzi agency for a very, very long time. And then he sold it. But we talked all about his relationship with the Kardashians and how him and Kim used to text, all, you know, almost every day, setting up photo photo shoots. She would, you know, uh, call him and say, OK, I'm going to be here and here. They would take the photos. She would call him up and wanting the like, OK, how much are, did we make off of it? This is what my cut should be like mastermind behind it and i never knock a single person for doing set of photos i think that there is a symbiotic relationship between the paparazzi and celebrities keeping them relevant in between movies or their tv shows or whatever so i don't knock it i just liked seeing this like behind the curtains look at kim the mastermind of hey let me work with the paparazzi set it up photoshop it make it look good put it out there and then what's my cut out of it I mean, I'm okay with that. I mean, everyone makes money, right? The paparazzi makes money. Kim makes money. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point of it. I, listen, my audience is used to, I mean, I I think the Card. I agree with it. I think Kim, I think the whole Kardashian family is just brilliant. I mean, say what you want. It's, yeah. it's, it's how many years now? I mean, is that really what you attribute it to? Or do you attribute it to something like, I mean, listen, they're the most famous family that's really ever existed ever other than maybe the first family, right? Like, I mean, so the Royals. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. Like the Royals, like, so they got to all be doing something right. I mean, well, I think I think that what has really worked for them, it's not focused on one person. Like, yes, yeah. Kim brought, you know, the world's attention onto them, but then to have one of the most famous models in the world or most successful models in the world as on in the family. Oh, she's dating Bad Bunny. Okay, then you've got, you know, all of them have their storylines, which if one of them's in the news, it keeps them all in the news. So you don't always need one person to keep you relevant. You've got all of them to keep you relevant. And I mean, the storylines that have come out of that family, like, I mean, 10, 15 years ago, do you think we'd be talking about Caitlyn Jenner or Bruce Jenner, like that storyline right there was a whole season, two seasons worth, you know? Totally. Do you think there is nothing bigger now? Like as far as like, I mean, the other day I was like, I mean, of course it was right near Craig's, but all of a sudden people are charging down the street and I'm like, Jesus, I'm going to get trampled. And it was a bunch of paparazzi. And of course, I'm like, it is Kendall Jenner getting into the car. She was mm -hmm. alone or she had one of her people, but I'm like, you know, is it like an interview, a soundbite? I mean, really, I think the Kardashians these days, it's that's it. Like they can say hello and it's a headline. Well, if you think about it, they never talked to the paparazzi. 
The paparazzi follow them everywhere they go, take all the photos. They don't ever say really anything. Maybe a high, maybe a wave. But Kim, I mean, ever since we started covering her at TMZ many, many years ago, and we were kind of like the first place to really put that spotlight on her, um, she just waves. But their big thing is fashion. And, you know, how do we look good? And it, well, that was one other conversation that got brought up with um, with Gary Morgan, the guy from Splash, is him saying, yeah, the, like her, her photos, each set would be essentially like $100,000 to her because of the fashion that she would line up. So let me put on this Chanel bracelet and Chanel's going to pay me a ton of money and this dress from wherever. And, you know, she so she the whole outfit she was being paid to wear and she was getting a photograph taken. So she was making money on both ends of it. And I'm just like, damn, that's amazing. Uh, it's just so smart. And like your whole job is just let me leave the house today and wear mm -hmm. this and stop off here and then I'll change. It's like, that's, I'm sure it's, it's a lot like, of work, but it sounds like a nice life to me. <laughs> I would do it. Sign me up. Now, I, I think I would get tired with the constant scrutiny as much as I like to like joke and, you know, everyone fantasizes about being famous or whatever the case is to not be able to leave your house or not to be able to go to a, an amusement park without just getting you know, trampled. Like it, there's a lot of probably not fun parts of being famous. I think so. I think like, you know, that lower level famous is the yeah. ideal. That's, yeah. it's so, just so. like access, like, okay, I don't have to wait in line at this restaurant. Great. Like if that's mm -hmm. the, what this can do, that's all I need. Right. Sign me up to be Seacrest famous, just enough to all the doors open up, but you can still maintain life. You You can still maintain life. Is there someone you would love to interview that you haven't like on your podcast? Like who would be your number one or oh, number man. one? Are, I mean, it changes, so right? Yeah, there's so I, many. I love Pink. She is the coolest chick in this industry to me. I think she's just so honest, real raw. I, I've been such a fan of hers for so long. Loved. I've interviewed her once. It was amazing, but I would love to have her on the podcast. I know she'd never do it because it's not her thing, but I would love to have her on. Um, and then I think there's just some other people just, you know, like an Oprah or, you know, th there's people out there that I think would just change the game if they sat down. And we're really like about the humanizing of Hollywood or pull back the curtain. Tell me stuff that, you know, we're not asking the typical questions that everyone else wants to know, but it's like, OK, when you had Harpo, what was the craft services table like? Like, how good was the food that you were serving all the people backstage? Like, th those are the weird questions that we like to ask. And it's like, just how rich are you? Like, do you yeah. know? <laughs> and you know what would be fun with Oprah is like playing that game. Like, who plays it? Is it? I think they play it on Watch What Happens Live. Like, okay, how much is a carton of milk in the grocery store? Mind you, I can't really answer these things either because I don't cook <laughs> or shop. I live a complete single life. But like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, well, Oprah had all that criticism.